What's up everyone, it's your boy Red 89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we're going to be discussing Ghoulies 4, a rad movie review of Ghoulies 4. Yes, that means that we've completed the franchise, we have watched all four Ghoulies films and you're going to hear my review of this film, my positives, the negatives, the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home and then make sure you stay tuned to the channel because now that we've tackled all four films, that means we can finally rank the films as well. So let's get down to this video. Roll it. So yes, we finally made it through all the Ghoulies films and we're discussing Ghoulies 4 from 1994. This was a straight to DVD release type film right here. And this one's directed by Jim Wynarski. If you're not familiar with him, he's great at doing just a lot of B-movie type films. He did Chopping Mall. That's one of his most popular films, but he also did The Return of the Swamp Thing. So Ghoulies 4 is quite the ride as this one takes us right back to the first one basically and is the only film out of all the films after the first film, the second one and the third one, this is the only film that ties itself to that first film that's actually a highlight and a positive for me. I think it's quite fabulous and we bring Peter Lepis back who plays Jonathan and he's our main character, our lead character and instead of being a evil sorcerer or like you know demonic type dude instead he's a cop now. He's a detective. He's kind of changed his ways and stuff, but he's actually involved as still with the occult when he's having his ex-girlfriend, Alexandra, played by Stacey Randall, which, mwah, oh my God, she was quite the treat in this film. And that's another positive right there is this film is filled with bodacious babes. But yes, yeah, Stacey Randall comes in as his ex and she's trying to basically start the start the occult again and bring back the more evil version of Jonathan and actually resurrect him from the other side. And we also have some ghoulies characters in here. Are they like the ghoulies from the previous films? Not really though, but let's discuss some more stuff. So besides the fact that we tied ourselves to the first film, which I like the continuity aspect, I really do like the fact that this film ties itself to that first film and we go all the way back to it, the lore and everything. I really do like that aspect of this. There's also, like I said, some gorgeous, bodacious babes in here. We have Stacey Randall in here, Barbara Allen Woods, Raquel Krill, and all of them. Like I said, they play these characters that this movie is quite interesting. It's to explain, like they said, they play these very powerful women, but very powerful women that you would see in other types of movies, very pornographic types of movies. So this movie does really weird stuff where it toes the line between horror, tries to be a comedy, but it also tries to be a porno. It's kind of weird. It juggles a lot of different variables. One other positive is that I think Peter Leopis, our lead actor, I think he's actually better in this film. Like it may, maybe it's just because that Ghoulies film, when I watched that first one, it just, his acting is one of the main reasons that kind of turned me off to parts of the movie. And in this one, I actually kind of liked his character. Like, you know, he's this detective, but he's like that know-it-all detective, the smart ass. He's always got a smart, smart aleck remark. He's dating these gorgeous babes. But of course, you're like, why are these babes with him? He's total trash. He's a drunk. Why are they with him? But of course, they're attracted to him. And like I said, he knows what to do when stuff goes down. He knows how to handle situations. And like I said, he really plays the character to a T, I think, in this film. And I like his version and his portrayal of the character and where he's at in this movie better than that first film. Another thing I got to say is this is also an action movie. That's another genre of subgenre that they try to juggle of film because this film has two gas station or supermarket shootouts. We have a lot of guns going off, a lot of explosions. So this one is a lot different from the previous three films because this one is heavy, heavy action elements. So yes, like I said, there's an action film in here. There's a horror film in here. There's a porno film in here. And there's a comedy film in here, all mixed into one, jumbled into one big ball. So let's get into the mix and negatives because to say, honestly, this is not a perfect film definitely leaves you with a lot to be desired, but I'm got to be honest in terms of my enjoyment. I did have more fun with this film than Ghoulies Go to College, but like I said, let's get into some of the mixed and negatives. And one of the negatives, the hugest one is... They decided to change the ghoulies, vastly change the ghoulies. Instead of being puppetry work or anything like that or animatronics at all, they're actually small actors in body suits in this one. 
and variably, ho very horribly designed bodysuits, I might add, and the mouths don't move. The comedy is very slapsticky. This is where a lot of the comedy elements come into play is with these ghoulie characters, these two, because they're like buddies, but they slapsticky, very comedy heavy, and I just, yeah. It came out of nowhere, and like the design, like I said, is a vastly great difference from the previous films. I know there isn't really a set design for a specific what a ghoulie is, but it's not what's in this movie. They look more like trolls to me. Another thing is, like I said, with the whole balancing of tones, I really did like the aspect that this film does take it to a point where it becomes so bad that it is funny. That is one thing that I forgot to talk about in my positives. This is one of those bad movies that does approach the so bad it's funny territory, especially with Alexandria, which is played by Stacey Randall, which is black widow in this film kind of trying to bring back and resurrect the occult and stuff and is a supporter of that you know the type of people so it's very funny to see her in here but she has the black leather outfit she kills a lot of people she has like the guns the gadgets the ninja stars and also some very teased hair that never changes throughout the film so like i said very campy stuff going on but the fact that they try to juggle the jungle juggle being an action film, being a comedy film, and being so many different types of subgenres that actually does hurt the film too as well. Another thing that I have to talk about, and this is a spoiler one, spoiler alert just in case if you're going to watch this movie and if you want to check this movie out, I stream this one free on Freebie. That's where I stream this one. But if you are going to check this film out, like I said, spoiler alert. With the ending, they do tease a Ghoulies 4 Part 2, and we're probably never going to see that. So that's another negative right there is that, like I said, I had a more enjoyment with this Ghoulies 4 movie, but we are never, ever going to get a continuation of this film. That's another negative right there. So yeah, this film, like I said, leaves a lot to be desired with the fact that it tries to juggle too many tones. It's got this really weird nature where it has, like I said, it ties itself to that first film, but... It has ghoulies that look nothing like the first film at all. So it's like, why did they decide to do that? So yeah, there's a lot of questions, a lot of concerns that go into with the final product of this movie. But like I said, I gotta be honest, I had a lot more fun with this film than I did the previous film. So Ghoulies 4, we gotta give a rad rating to this bad boy. And you're gonna be a little bit surprised by the rad rating. The rad rating is gonna be a 5.5 out of 10, which I believe is the same that I gave to Ghoulies Go to College. This film is a better film. Like I said, gun to my head, if I was to choose between Ghoulies 4 and Ghoulies Go to College, I would choose to watch Ghoulies 4 before that film. Another negative I kind of meant to say about this film, I forgot to say just now, it just kind of popped into my head was we had all these bodacious babes in here and we have no nudity in this film but we had nudity and ghoulies go to college so by this point i'm like really we already approached the whole sleazy you know slutty kind of nudity thing going on in the third film i think they should have just kept that tone going and for real they would have just been juggling some other kind of tone of subgenre, and it wouldn't have really mattered and i think to be honest that would have helped ghoulies four more and it probably would have bumped it up to a 6.5 if they had that going on but but like I said, 5.5 out of 10. And now that is it for the Ghoulies franchise. I have watched all four films and now the ranking video will be dropping pretty soon. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Like the video, that definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I drop a video. But most importantly, you all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.